This is a highlight of the Off Topical podcast. Listen for free to the whole episode at offtopical.net. All right. Did you hear about this, Raven? Eric Walpaw's return to Valve. What is this? What is this? What does this mean I, for us? You know, I didn't hear about this until I saw that part of the show notes. Yeah. And I was like, what? Like, I was completely blown away because, you know, everybody keeps saying there's going to be a Half-Life VR game. And I'm just sitting here hoping, like, oh, please don't be a Half-Life VR game. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, I hear you on that. Uh, there are there are some pluses and minuses to that, but uh, yeah, I'm more on your camp. Yeah, it's like it's like I understand the appeal to VR and I understand why people like it and all that crap, but I don't care. I I want I want Half Life Three. I don't want it to if it has VR support, that's fine. But I just want a Half Life Three. That's all I want. That's all I want. That's all I ask for. You know, Valve. Yeah. If you if you if anyone from Valve listens to this podcast, we don't want your stupid card game. We don't want Battle Royale for CSGO. We want Half-Life 3. Yeah, for real, dude. You, you you put out Half-Life 3, you'll sell like 30 million units and you'll make a fortune and everybody will love you again. Yeah. See, that's it. There are some pluses and minuses to Half-Life VR, uh, in my opinion. Uh, so one of the things that uh, is really lacking in the VR world is the fact that uh, there hasn't been the Super Mario 64 of VR. And what I mean by that is, like, if you played a platformer, like a 3D platformer, around the time that Super Mario 64 came out, nobody did it right except for except for Nintendo. Everyone else doing 3D platformers objectively failed because there wasn't, like, the, the 3D platformer formula that had been laid out that other people could kind of copy and, you know, improve upon. And I think Half-Life VR, when it's done by Valve and they are building the hardware to go along with it, they might actually build a real experience in VR that shows other AAA publishers what VR is and what it's capable of. I think that that's like a big deal, but I also really just want Half-Life 3. <laughs> like, that's really what it boils down to, isn't it? Yeah, it really is. Uh, I don't know. So if you guys don't know, Eric Wolpaw, uh was the, the guy who wrote Psychonauts uh, at Double Fine. He also wrote Half-Life Episodes uh, 1 and 2, and uh, or Half-Life 2, Episodes 1 and 2, Portal, Left 4 Dead, and Portal 2. He's an incredibly prolific science fiction author, uh, writer, and I, I, I really like his stuff. I mean, the cut of his jib in Portal 2 really gave that whole, uh, that whole game the the life and the character that it wouldn't have had without his hand in in the story um so if you don't know he left the company in 2017 and uh, along with a bunch of other people who like were instrumental in creating like valve and all of the ip that they are known for um and he's one of a handful of the people who left to actually come back uh he and apparently he's been there for several months which i think is fascinating um, the fact that he was like titled, uh, given credit in artifacts, uh, credits, that means he's been there for a while, you know? Yeah. Or, or before he left, <clears throat> he was working on it before he left. He would still get credit for that. True. That is true. Or he could anyway. I mean, you know, depending on what his contract states. Um, but you know, if he's been there for several months, it's entirely possible. I didn't know artifact had much of a story, but. <laughs> right. Yeah, it might be like the lore. It's it's weird that someone would leave and then basically come back almost straight away. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's only been like a year since he left, a year and a half maybe. Um, but, you know, considering that there was that Portal 2 Easter egg in CSGO, I mean, maybe. Maybe there's something that he's working on that we don't, uh, that we don't know about. I mean, they, Valve have said that they have several uh, games in development. And that was, and they said, I think it was like three. Did they say three? Something like that. And that was. I know, I know that Left 4 Dead 3 has been confirmed. Yeah, and Half Life VR is more or less confirmed. Um, yeah, but it's going to be like Half Life 1 or Half Life 2 or something. It's not going to be anything. Uh, I think it's going to be mean? a standalone story. I don't think it's going to be a rehash. I think it's just going to be a rehash. Why, why do you say that? If it's not a rehash, then it's just going to suck because it's not going to be Half Life 3. We don't want episode three. 
We want Half-Life 3. <laughs> yeah, but I don't... I really don't think that Valve could get away with just doing Half-Life 1. A, a, a in, re in, yeah, I actually totally think they could. No. Because it would allow them to uh, use a pre-existing... Um, you know, formula or, or pre-existing game and then narrow and like really iron down their gameplay, you know? Cause you know, when you go to VR, you know, everything changes, everything changes. Right. But that's so kind of why I would, don't think they could get away with that. Oh, I think they totally could. Cause then, then they would get to work out all the kinks on an existing IP, which means people would be significantly less mad at them. But then again, maybe they don't care about that. I mean, they didn't, <laughs> they released artifacts. So maybe they really don't care about that. Yeah. Um, and then when they make Half-Life 3, which I'm still hoping for, and no one will crush my dream. I will not let anyone crush my dream that Half-Life 3 will come. But what will happen is, at least in my opinion, Half-Life 3 will uh, be VR and non-VR compatible. And then they'll have all that prior experience. And they'll make like a really amazing game. And it'll be really, really good. See, I think the leap in technology between like, uh, you know, a standard PC first person shooter with a mouse and keyboard and and uh and a vr experience i think that that's like going from like m taking a uh, a movie and trying to turn it into a video game like i just feel like they're completely separate things you have completely different uh uh expectations and uh uh, just design decisions in one format i don't feel can be easily uh, applied to the other so you can't take like i don't know if i'm making sense here but like i feel like you can't have a game like half-life 3 and have it have a desktop pc gaming experience and also have it simultaneously in the same build be a vr game i just feel like the design decisions are completely opposite so like oh yeah absolutely i mean i'm not i'm not saying that i mean it, that's why i'm saying it would be quite a hassle because uh, you know there's so many different things you have to account for and there's different there's just a lot of different changes my problem with it is is vr is not actually that big of a market i mean right the biggest vr market is oculus and they have to pay developers to even care enough to do anything with it like you know, a few like two, three years ago, we had like that VR bubble, and all those VR games were like rolling out, and you still see them every now and again, of course. But it wasn't like back then where it was like new announcement, new announcement, new announcement. Now you mostly see it's like an add-on to eat an individual game or something. And the problem is, there's just no money in it. I mean, sure, there's some money in it, but let's be real. You know, businesses don't go around trying to make pocket change because that's not how you keep staff and the lights on and everything else. Right. So I just I just don't feel that a Half Life only VR game would actually sell well if it was an if it was a new IP. See, I think the opposite. I think that there's if, just not enough people to sell to. Well, I think that if Valve like comes out and says, "Hey guys, uh, we remade Half Life One as a VR game," no one would buy it because nobody has headsets, or very few people have headsets. So the idea that like Valve would come out and be like, hey, guys, we made a brand new Half-Life experience and the only way to play it is with VR. People would actually buy a headset to play the game. I doubt it. No? I seriously doubt it. It's a three four hundred dollar investment on top of having to need a decent machine to do it. I don't I doubt it. I think I think I, the, I, I seriously doubt it. Well, see, what, this is why I think that they're building a VR console. Like, yeah, I was about to say that they could sell it if they sold a console that included VR because then it would be like, well, everyone who buys this console, you know, and if they sell a few million units of that, then they're guaranteed to have a few million people with the headset. Yeah. See, the thing is, like, if you look at Proton, right? Well, first of all, let me back up. The VR games that are available right now are almost exclusively Windows titles. You cannot get many, if any. Uh, Linux VR games on Steam right now. If you look at Proton, Proton is creating a native bridge for for uh, uh, the VR uh, protocols between Linux and uh, Proton games. So it's allowing like for native uh, for like a native level gameplay uh, for VR games. 
on Linux through Proton. That's not uh, incidental. Like they did that on purpose. And I really think that uh, Valve are developing their own console type, maybe wearable, maybe not, VR headset console type deal. And the launch title is going to be Half-Life VR. And I think it's going to be its own experience standalone and not part of you know not not like based on any prior uh half-life games maybe i'm too optimistic though <laughs> I, I i would argue maybe you're being a little too optimistic but maybe that's just my pessimism getting in the way All right, um, everybody mark this date <laughs> january 4th 2019 i called it <laughs> You uh, called it, huh? I called it, man. You're gonna. I, I, I really don't see any other alternative. Like, the the one thing I think I might be wrong about is that it it isn't gonna be a standalone like Half Life experience. It's gonna be based on a previous game. I, you might be right about that, but I really can't see any other alternative for Valve developing well, their own hardware. <clears throat> Well, it, it's one of those things, like, you take all your old games, the ones that you can, like Team Fortress 2, Half-Life, Counter-Strike, and you turn them into VR experiences. And then you build a back catalog. And you build experience. Because, you know, even even Valve, the company that doesn't really care that much, you know, that's always in it for the long haul, yeah. I don't foresee them making a VR-only title. Like, I could see them making a title where, you know... VR is like the main focus or it's the selling point, but it's, you know, it's going to be refined with a mouse and keyboard mm. because there's just, there's just not enough people to justify it. I mean, yeah, valve has the whole Mac windows and Linux market. You know, it's got the whole big three, but there's still not enough people. And, and, you know, they've made great strides into like, what is it? The open VR you know, the library that handles everything. So, like, yeah. you can just code it once and then you can support, you know, all the crazy amount of VR headsets that are out there and growing. My gosh. I mean, did you see, did you see, uh, what's the, you know, the Project Cars devs? Yeah, I know. Yeah. Did you see yesterday that they announced a game console that's going to support VR? No, I did not. Yes. No joke. They are building a game console, apparently. And this game console is going to be as powerful as a very, in quotes, fast computer two years from now. And it's coming out this year, apparently. Wow. Really? That is interesting. Really, really. really. Like, no joke. Like, really, really. Um, it, it, it is the craziest thing to me because it's just like, I mean, they clearly got outside investors to make that. And secondly, it just blows me away that they're just like, yeah, we're just going to make a we're going to make a console because they feel that they didn't even count Nintendo in on this. Oh they just God. literally said Microsoft and Sony have too much of a monopoly. And then if you count Nintendo, it's even worse. And I was like, it is kind of true because like Nintendo really doesn't compete with the other two. No, Nintendo just sits over here on the sidelines picking up the scraps. Uh, I would not agree with that statement. But that's okay. Sure they do. Sure they do. No. I mean, don't get me wrong. The Switch <laughs> has sold really good. And over the years, if you count all the different variants, the 3DS has sold really good. But they just don't have the numbers that Microsoft and Sony have built. Well, I because think they're I, playing Because I guess they didn't games. want to enter that market. They didn't want to enter it. So they just decided to, you know, they're they're fine with their, you know, 30 million customers. And they're, they're cool with that. And that's, yeah. I mean... The thing is, I'd love to have thirty million customers. Not to derail this, but PlayStation and Xbox are uh, they 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 picked up uh, Sega's uh, torch, if you will. Sega, their whole marketing scheme was: if you're playing on Nintendo, you're playing the baby games. That's what they and so they're playing. They're they're fighting each other with the the battle of specs, which is a game you're never gonna ever win, especially on a console. Well, and so. Well, Nintendo is playing a completely different game in that, but whatever. That's not here and there. My only my only stance on something like that is this: uh, back when Sega ran those commercials, it was because Nintendo didn't really typically allow violent games on Nintendo. Yeah, 
I don't think it was up until like, because I know the Super Nintendo had a few. Like the Super Nintendo had Doom, without the blood, and it had. I think it also had Wolfenstein. Yeah. Um, but they really toned it down, like really toned it down to make it more, you know, Nintendo compatible. And I don't think it was until like the N64 or even the GameCube that they actually really started getting like gory games and, you know, just, you know, like I'm sure they had like one or two, but it's not like, you know, PlayStation and Xbox where like they have like tons of them. Mm. And it's because Nintendo has always wanted to be the family console. Yeah, well, it's more about games and having fun than it is about uh, being well, edgy. And I, I don't, grown I don't up. know about that. I mean, they literally had a mission statement for a long time that was to be the family console. I mean, that's I mean, fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's not a problem, but the problem is, is that as the game industry grew, Nintendo didn't keep up with that trend, so they became the family console again, and you know that's kind of why they kind of well, it's probably one of the reasons why the Wii U did not sell well. One of many yeah many reasons although they've gotten better uh i would argue the other big failure on nintendo's part is how terrible they've treated third-party devs yeah that's a that's a major sin. like it's not just the fact that oh i have to tone this down for nintendo i'm also going to get treated like crap while i have to dummy down my own game it's yeah like, uh, it's just kind of like people were just like eh, we'll go over here right which is a shame because Nintendo's always done like their their peripherals are always like really cool. Yeah. Like they always have like really neat and innovative controllers and stuff. Now whether or not they're like the best controller is debatable. Like I don't like the nunchuck. No thank you. But they are certainly creative, which has always been like a really nice selling point. Although I will say this, the early 9 the 90s in like remember the N64 and the GameCube controllers? Yeah. No. The GameCube is one of my favorite controllers of all time. It is. It is a good controller, but the N64 controller is the weirdest thing ever. Yeah. I mean, I they, didn't, how... they didn't have anything else. I mean, like, there was no other company or game console that was making controllers at the time. That was, like, the first shot for analog controllers. Well, they, they had, you know, they had their prior experiences. I think the problem might have been, because remember... Uh, I know we're getting off topic here, but whatever. <laughs> uh, remember, Nintendo and Sony were actually making a console together, which would later become the PlayStation. Yeah. So it's entirely possible the N64's weird, wonky controller has everything to do with the fact that they were originally going to make a controller like the PlayStation, but now they couldn't because they had a falling out with Sony. Maybe. But and that's what gave them that goofy controller. The DualShock didn't launch until like 1998, though. I mean, yeah, 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 yeah. But they still had the the like like a nor traditional design like Sony yeah. kind of cemented. This is kind of how a controller is. And then Microsoft came in and, you know, made this weird Dreamcast based controller. Remember the Dreamcast controller? I like the Dreamcast controller. I kind I kind of like the Dreamcast controller. Yeah. It, you know what? It was nice about the Dreamcast controller. It was big. Yeah. Fit your hands nicely. It wasn't this tiny little thing that like your hands and, you know, just completely covered up. Yeah. The Dreamcast was the only Sega console I liked. <laughs> I like I like the older ones, but you have to love 2D games if you like the older ones because there ain't no 3D on iOS. And the FM synth that just sounds like garbage no matter what. Yeah. Although some people <laughs> really like the sound chip and those things. I mean, I like the sound of FM synth, but in the in the Genesis especially, there was only one production house that created good music and it was the sega team like i mean the sonic team like everyone every other console every other game on that console sounded like hot garbage anyway <laughs> how did we get <laughs> here where did we I, I don't know i don't know let's uh <clears throat> so uh steam hardware survey <laughs> oh yes all right well yes let us know what you think uh did uh did uh is eric walpaw's return to valve that's what we were talking about holy crap is eric walpaw's return to valve uh, a huge deal for steam uh for hlvr or what do you think let us know uh on on youtube comments because this is gonna be on youtube or uh on the forums forum.heavyelement.io what you just heard is a highlight from the off topical podcast Listen to the full episode for free over at offtopical.net.